how to run a Power BI project. Um, so myself, I've run you know nearly 100 Power BI projects uh, within a government context. And this presentation, you know, it's a 15 minute, very, very high level abstract of actually a one day hands-on PD that I run, which is all about introduction to the methodology and how we run a project in the data space, especially of Power BI. Um, and I've run this at, at Ballarat and Glenelg and uh, councils, which have you know got a lot of feedback that they've really enjoyed that process and you know helping people along that data maturity and understanding the process of working with data. So if anyone's interested, you know, in a one-day PD for introduction um, in methodology and running Power BI projects, please, please do let me know. Uh, but in essence, I'm talking I'm going to talk about why do projects fail and a framework to help us run a project, um, especially in the space of Power BI. So this is the methodology that I'm going to talk you through. Um, I've, I've run a lot of projects and a lot of my projects have been successful, delivered a lot of insights. A lot of my projects have fallen over on their face and been complete flops. Um, and so what I want to do is help you avoid the complete flops and make sure that your project has uptake by the business, it's delivering insights and it's doing what you want to do. Um, so this methodology is not purely created by myself. I have developed this, but it is based off, if you see in the bottom right there, CRISP-DM. So CRISP-DM is quite an old framework. Uh, it's more to do with data science. So the DM stands for data mining. Uh, but what I've done is I have adopted this framework and I've made it applicable for Power BI based on my experiences um, of documenting where projects have fallen over and place them into certain gateways. Um, and so what you can see here is we have, it's kind of a circular framework. We start a business understanding, you know, defining the scope, defining the stakeholders. We move to data understanding where we have a look at the data, understand the context of the data, clean prep the data, data visualization, data storytelling, and then we come to evaluate. Now, you can move in between any of these and go backwards and forwards, but at evaluate, you will then decide, am I going to close this project off or have I found something else interesting that I want need to go back to the business? So you can, you can run around the circle a few times, but eventually you want to close out this project and deploy it and you know close your hands off it. We don't want to be working on Power BI projects forever and that's where we deploy and we pitch. So what I'm going to take you through is this. Uh, if you are interested in this, like the image of the methodology, um, I'll drop this link in the chat. Um, you can download it from here. So it's just a simple PDF, which has what we're going to cover today um, at a high level. So I'll drop that in the chat for everybody. Um, and you can feel free to, to grab the PDF that I'll be talking to from here. So let's jump back into here. So I always like to start presentation with some stats. So through 2020, 90% of corporate strategy strategies will explicitly mention information as a critical enterprise asset and analytics as an essential competency. And you know, there's a hundred people in this meeting, and I'm sure you have heard somebody talk about being data driven, making data decisions, um, and you would have had it in some type of strategy. Um, and so this is a report in 2019 that was done by Gartner that said that even though businesses are doing this, only 20% of analytic insights will deliver business outcomes. And if we flip that on its head, we could say that 80% of your effort in the analytics space will not deliver any benefit to your organization. And that's a really hard sell, you know, to sell to your manager. You know, I'm gonna spend 10 days working on analytics and Power BI, and two of those days are gonna deliver value and the rest of it's gonna be a waste of time. Um, and this presentation is all about how do we identify and run a project that it's actually going to fall into the 20% where it actually delivers value to the business. So, these are my top four reasons for data project failures. Uh, so not involving the business, not knowing how to get the data, lack of executive buy-in and poor data integrity. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump through some of these and these are again, based on my personal experience. There's a lot more reasons that a project can fail. 
So number one, not involving the business. So the, the approach of if we build it, they will come does not work. Um, trust me, they will not come. They will actually fight you tooth and nail not to use what you've built if you don't involve them from the start. A data project should never be about data. It should always be about the business. And that's a really important concept to understand. Uh, a motto that I like to talk about is we don't solve data problems, we solve business problems. Um, and so what are those business problems? What are the pain points? What are the roadblocks? What are the issues of the business? If this is the focus of our Power BI report, and we saw some before, you know, it was automating a process, removing data sources, um, showing data quality issues with our data. Um, the result will be that the business will have a huge buy into your to your report because you are solving their problems rather than just getting carried away looking at data and solving data problems. Oops, sorry, there's a few more points in there. Uh, having defined requirements. Um, so whenever we, we run a Power BI project, we should define the requirements at the start. So a BRD, which is a business requirements document, having a document where you can define the scope, define the audience, what are the KPIs? How often do I have to refresh this data? Uh, all these type of things need to be defined at the start. The next one's talking about having a key stakeholder, right? Who are the people in the business who actually understand the context of the data that we're gonna work on? Uh, if I can give an example, I was working on a Power BI report extracted some data from SQL, presented it to the business, and they're like, no, no, that's that's all completely wrong. Why was it wrong? There was a particular field in the database that at 2017, at some point, they just started recording something different in it. I had no idea. I had no idea of the context of the business, the context of the data. Um, and so being able to have a key stakeholder who can explain, if it's not you, someone else who can explain all those data nuances is really important. So the second one is not knowing how to get the data. Um, so is the data stuck within a system? Is it within the cloud? Is it on premise? Uh, how do I get access to that data is always a big issue. And another one is, you know, does the data even exist? Um, you know, I've worked with a lot of people who are, you know, maybe doing surveys um, and they need to think about, are we actually asking the correct questions to answer that? Um, am I even asking the question in the survey? Am I introducing bias in the survey? So there's a lot of considerations in about how do we actually get the data? Um, if the data is out there in a public sphere, can we get access to it? Uh, I wanna quickly show you an amazing link. Um, I know you've all used Google before, but this is data set search in Google. I'll, I'll copy this link and I'll drop it in the chat for you. Um, this is an amazing resource. If ever someone comes and asks you, you know, oh, do you have some data on, on this or that? Um, if I say, for example, I want to look at Glenelg and I want to see if there's any data, public data available on trees and I can search in here and here it shows me. <coughs> so it's, it's searching the web for, for data sources. Um, that, are, that are free and I can connect to and use and reference. Um, so if ever you are looking for data, don't do a normal Google search. Uh, make sure you have the data set search within Google and you can, you can check, you know, last updated. I just want tabular data, I want images, I want text. Um, is, it, is it free to use or commercial? Um, just thought I'd share that as a really good resource that I do use whenever you're looking for data. Uh, the third one is lack of executive buy-in. So uh, projects don't always go according to plan. Sometimes you'll have a change of direction. Sometimes your project's going to go over budget over time. What happens when you need strong support from your key executives? Um, sometimes, you know, you're going to get pushback. You're going to get people who don't want to use your Power BI report. Uh, if you don't have executive buy-in from the start, uh, you are always going to have issues in terms of getting uptake and use of your Power BI report. Uh, we always have to remember that the business has conflicting priorities um, and they might not be interested in using the Power BI report because they've got their BAU that they want to use. Um, 
So this is always something that we need to consider. So who's who's the executive when push comes to shove? Who is going to be able to help people to use it? Because sometimes when you're working within the business, people people are scared. You know, are you going to find out one that I'm doing something wrong? Two that I'm not doing my job efficiently. Um, people are scared when really we're just trying to help them do their jobs better. And instead of playing around with Excel spreadsheets actually spend the time making decisions from that data instead of manipulating data. And that's really one of the, the goals of our Power BI reports. And the fourth one is poor data integrity. So as a popular saying, garbage, garbage in, garbage out, uh, that is especially true for us in the data world. So poor data quality and accuracy will be a major obstacle to the success of our data project. Uh, if we have a look at some stats, uh, this one is from KPMG. They did a research paper. 84% of CEOs are concerned about the quality of the information that they are using to make business decisions. So they're all for using you know, the lingo, let's be data driven, but they don't actually trust the data that is coming in. Um, why, you know, we saw in that earlier presentation, it's so important that we have Power BI data quality checks. So we are checking that data is being used correctly. Um, it's been filled out, the data entry is being done or however it's being brought in is being checked. Uh, Gartner Research found that poor data quality is the reason for the failure of 40% of business initiatives. Um, and so, you know, that, that's a huge issue if you think about, yes, anyone can build a Power BI report, but if that Power BI report is built off poor quality data, we're going to have serious issues in terms of the business making decisions based on wrong data. And if they find that out at the end, um, that's not going to reflect good on you or the, the community's view of what you guys are doing. Um, so the second point there, you know, uh, Dion was talking about, you know, data maturity, uh, encouraging the business to treat data as an asset. Uh, there's lots of times and I'm not having to go at customer service, I'm just using it as an example. Everyone is busy, they're taking in requests and they tag everything with that dreaded other option. So this is a request about tree, other, um, because it's just easier or it's the first option in the list. Uh, they are not understanding that data is actually an asset that our business is collecting. Later on down the track, someone's going to be making decisions from this data. If I don't do the data um, entry correctly, there's going to be flow on effects for us as a business. So we really need to lift the data maturity of our businesses. And the last one there is talking about data issues early. So we want to identify our data issues right from the start, uh, not after we've created the Power BI report and people have started to use it. Um, that's really going to be terrible if people are making decisions of a Power BI report that has poor data quality inside of it. So these are some common reasons for data project failures. Um, what we have a look, uh, so I've listed about four, um, but there's some other ones in terms of, you know, poor data visualization, using the wrong data visualization um, to tell something which is making it misleading, um, misapplication of analytics, uh, not training, which was with some of the questions that were asked before. So people who are using the Power BI reports, so not us as Power BI builders, but people who are using the Power BI reports don't actually know how to navigate a Power BI report or they're not comfortable with it. They don't know how to use a filter. They don't know how to bookmark something and then it all becomes too hard and they don't want to use it. So all of these things are important considerations that we need to think about when we are doing a Power BI project. So in essence, that brings us back to this data analysis development methodology um, and all the different stop points that we have along the line. So if we have a look at this uh, business understanding, I should have determined who who is the executive that's going to support this project at the start. I should have worked with the business to determine what are the KPIs, what are the blockers. All this should have been done when we're developing what's referred to as a business requirement document. Uh, moving into the next one, data understanding. We need you know a stakeholder, someone from the business who understands all the nuances of the data. Poor data integrity. This is something that we can if we can't fix it at the source. We need to clean up in our Power BI reports within Power Query, within the poor data integrity. 
poor communication in terms of how do I communicate uh, my Power BI reports? How do I use colors? How do I use the correct charts? How do I have a corporate brand for what we're doing? All these types of considerations for a project. And then we come here to the inability to pivot. So inability to pivot is all about um, can I close this project off or not? Do I need to go back to the business and say, hey, hang on a minute, I've identified X, Y, and Z. Is this correct or is it a data issue? And so we might find something that's interesting. Uh, one thing I didn't mention in business understanding is getting the business to identify hypotheses. So we believe that we've increased our capital works budget by X, um, and we've not delivered by why, and we will go out and test that hypothesis. We will build a Power BI report, and then we can say, yes, what you're saying is true, or what you're saying is not true. Um, so we we validate our hypotheses here, and if it's correct, we can go on, and if it's not, we can go back to the business, and then we might need to go back through this process again. So we can go through this many times, uh, but once we're happy here, the business is happy, this is where we go about closing off a report. Um, so in the deployment or the pitch, so we want to publish our report to Power BI service. How do we share it? What's the licensing? How does the workspaces work? Uh, we would set all of that up. And um, you know, if I reference back to Dion where he's he's done his Power BI report, he's showing it to the management and then the management are like, this is great. What about this and this and this and this? Um, and then what happens is, and I, I experience this a lot, these Power BI reports just become, you know, living reports that I can never close off and never tick off in terms of I've completed this Power BI report. So having our scope defined in business understanding allows us then go back to the business and say, yes, that's fantastic. I would love to do that. Uh, let's do this in another phase of the project so that I can actually close it off, close off my deliverables, um, and then we'll scope it out again. I think it's a fantastic idea. So if you never define that scope at the start, you can never close your project at the end. Um, so business understanding is the most critical aspect of whenever you're delivering a Power BI report. Um, so deployment and pitch, how we get it off, how do we set up the refreshes? And also what's important for us is how do we now pitch it to the business? How do we show the Power BI report? Uh, how do we equip them with training in terms of using the Power BI report? Um, and this, I suppose, in terms of time, I've done a very high level in terms of a one day kind of PD and how we go through in terms of, of this methodology. So there's a few other slides, but um, in terms of that, we'll, uh, maybe I'll, I can talk in more aspect about that at the end. Um, but for those of you, thank you, who, who've um, stuck through to the end. I know we, we've gone over time.